Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We are looking at research in education. This is just an overview. I'm going to look at quantitative and qualitative research so you can understand. Both are important. Both are methods of science used to come to understand and view reality. Quantitative research or experimental research is what we most commonly think about when we think of research. Here the researcher takes an active role, sets up a type of observation or experiment in order to isolate a variable. A variable is something that changes. It is a quality or condition about which the researcher wants to draw conclusions. In experimental research, the goal is to figure out what the effect of a particular approach or treatment variable might be in order to make an accurate prediction or demonstrate a causal relationship that one thing causes the other. In order to do this, in order to make accurate predictions, you have to control all the extraneous variables. Everything's the same except that one thing that you want to test or look for so that you can say that this indeed causes that. To do this, we have to isolate all extraneous variables, as I said. We use numbers to reach a state of knowing here. Something has to be weighed, measured, quantified in order to say it is so. It is a cause-effect paradigm used to make sense of the world. Important terms in quantitative research. The independent variable is the treatment or factor that the researcher manipulates to determine the particular effect of something. It is what is done or not done to a group of people or classes. The dependent variable is the particular effect or result of the treatment. An easy way to remember this, the distinction between dependent and independent variables, is to think of the dependent variable as depending on the treatment or independent variable. Depending on this, that happens. The uh, treatment, uh, treatment group is the group of subjects or participants that are exposed to the treatment. The control group is a group as similar as possible, has all the characteristics to the treatment group. However, this group is not exposed to a particular treatment or approach for the purpose of comparison. The research question is stated up front. This is what the researcher hopes to find, and only you only focus on that research question. Everything else is ignored. A hypothesis is an un tested conjecture, a statement to be supported or not with the outcome of the experiment. All right, uh, A theory is used to, uh, to explain a body of data, an interrelated set of concepts that is used to explain a set of data, a dot-to-dot -dot picture based on data. For example, we have learning theories. Different learning theories explain learning differently. Behavioral learning theory, cognitive learning theory, humanistic learning theory. Different theories explain the same thing differently. All theories are a little bit right and a little bit wrong. Confounding variables when we analyze and evaluate research studies, we have to think about what might be messing up the experiment or make it possible to interpret that research study differently. The first one is concurrent events. These are things happening at the same time outside the experiment that mess up the experiment or may be the cause of the outcome. Another confounding variable is dropout or experimental mortality. This is when the subjects of a study drop out while it is in progress. That uh, can affect the outcome. Dropout. Unequal samples, subjects or participants in the experiment or control groups are different. Rule of thumb when comparing two things, you have to make sure the two things are comparable. For example, often private schools are compared to public schools, but the sample size is completely different. Maturation. Sometimes when we say something has an effect, it's changed. Look at how much they've grown. Well, change over time occurs to growth or maturation, and you can't attribute it to our particular treatment or approach. And sample bias is you select certain subjects or leave out certain participants in order to get a particular effect. You may, may leave out a group who scores poorly or include a group that will do well.
Confounding variables. These are other types of confounding variables. You may want to stop this video and look at all of them. But these are all things that can account for outcomes or differing outcomes. The next is qualitative research. Qualitative research uh, is a systematic observation used to reach an understanding, not to prove or disprove something, but to understand what's going on. In qualitative research, the researcher takes the world as it is and observe it. You're not trying to manipulate reality in order con to control the variables. The very act of manipulating and controlling reality changes reality, so you're looking at a non-real thing. You are still using data to build theories, but you can't usually uh, generalize your results or what you find to other population. This happens here, so it must happen everywhere. That's an example of generalizing. Now, people that discount qualitative research, remember Piaget, Montessori, Vygotsky. These are some great names upon which education is built. These are all examples of qualitative research that help us understand that have been used to create theories upon which learning and education is built. Now qualitative research uh, starts with a question but you are not confined to the question. In quantitative research you have your question and you only focus on that. It's like looking at reality in a, through a cardboard tube. But with qualitative research you are looking at a wide view of reality. That is a very basic overview of quantitative and qualitative research.